informally proving that the limit as x approaches negative five of one fifth x plus three equals two, let epsilon greater than zero be arbitrary, determine delta as a function of epsilon. So this question involves the formal definition of a limit, which states the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l, if for every given number epsilon greater than zero, there is a number delta greater than zero, so that if x is within delta units of a, and x doesn't equal a, meaning x is in this interval here, from a minus delta to a plus delta, and x doesn't equal a, then f of x is within epsilon units of L, meaning f of x is in this interval here, from L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon. We can also state this using absolute value inequality shown here, which we'll use to show a relationship between epsilon and delta, where the absolute value of f of x minus L, meaning the distance between f of x and L is less than epsilon, whenever the absolute value of x minus a, the distance between x and a, is less than delta and greater than zero. So going back to our problem, applying our definition, we'd have the absolute value of f of x, which is the quantity one-fifth x plus three minus L, which is two, is less than epsilon whenever the absolute value of x minus a, or the absolute value of x minus, in this case, negative five, is less than delta and greater than zero. So again, we use these two inequalities to form a relationship between epsilon and delta. So let's go ahead and simplify both of these. Here we'd have one-fifth x, and then plus three minus two, that's plus one, less than epsilon. Here on the right, we have the absolute value of x plus five is less than delta and greater than zero. So if we can manipulate this absolute value inequality, so we have the absolute value of x plus five, we can show a relationship between epsilon and delta. So notice how here, if we multiplied both sides of this inequality by five, we'd have five times the absolute value of one-fifth x plus one less than five epsilon. And how we distribute, we'd have the absolute value of x plus five is less than five epsilon. This is a relationship that we need. Notice how here we have the absolute value of x plus five is less than five epsilon. And here we have the absolute value of x plus five is less than delta. So from this we can conclude that the absolute value of x plus five, which represents a distance from x and negative five, must be less than delta, which can equal five epsilon and greater than zero. So going back to our question, we're asked to determine delta as a function of epsilon, which we've done here. Delta is equal to five epsilon. There are also many other values of delta that would work here. Any value smaller than five epsilon would also work for delta, but based upon the work that we've shown, this would be the most obvious way to express delta as a function of epsilon. So we'll go ahead and leave it in this form here, but it is important to recognize that if delta was equal to four epsilon, that would be a small interval, and therefore the distance between f of x and l would still be less than epsilon. I hope you found this helpful.